So the question is, who's your current customer? Who would your ideal customer be if you were going to build to a national presence at the level you're talking about? That's a great question. We do a lot of research on who's buying our stuff and why. And obviously, we're an expensive product, so we're not for the average person. We're trying to educate folks in that beer is the most affordable luxury brand on earth. The best beers in the world are $6, $8, $10. Anybody can afford to drink like a king or a Saudi prince. There's all these other luxury items that Saudi princes can afford that I can't afford. You can probably afford it, but I can't. And a lot of people in this room cannot. But yeah. beer is available to everyone. The best beers are eight bucks. And the worst beers are four bucks. So now, the notion of value. Now I want to show you something. What he just did was begin to build a core story. Jot this down. Every business needs a core story. What makes what he did powerful is he did not sell me on his beer. He sold me on me having a greater experience of life and understanding it's the difference between me spending four and eight bucks. That's your story. If he can get that across, if he can become the communicator of, I built this business for one reason. And, and is it, boom, I see Boom's off. That's a product. What's the company name? It's Lord Hobo. Lord Hobo. Lord Hobo. So he said, I built Lord Hobo because there's one thing in life we know. Lots of things that make people feel good cost a fortune. There's lots of things only the wealthy have, the 1%. But you can have the same beer the 1% has for only four bucks more than you're spending for. I don't drink beer, so I want some $4 beer call. Tell me a brand that we want to just bastardize. Let's right call now. it gluten free Miller Lite. Call it. <laughs> Gluten free beer. <laughs> Good one. I like that, Daniel. <laughs> so if you just spend four bucks more, this is what you can have. That core story. How many of you, I don't drink beer, so I'm not engaged for the beer, but I'm engaged by the brilliance of putting a story together that doesn't make me say, drink my beer. It says, give yourself the best. Right? And, but it's even better than give yourself the best because give yourself the best you know, the, uh, the gentleman that founded, um, um, I was saying it earlier, the tequila, um, Fatone, right? It's a friend of mine. And he bought, what he did was he spent $25,000 to buy Patron. That's all he spent. It was a worthless little piece of shit company with a set of recipes and some old leaking things in Mexico. He had only one idea. His idea was, same as Steve Wynn, if I sell significance, I'm going to get a margin. He liked the taste. He thought it was unique and different than anybody else. But what he did is he went to France and had, went to a perfume factory and had them make those incredible bottles you see of Patron. It's, it's a perfume bottle. That's what it is. And people in the perfume business want to sell you unbelievably high expense for something that costs them fucking virtually nothing. Right? It's cats, asses, and things like that. That's what, where that stuff comes from. So it's like this. Right? right. <laughs> You got one for him. Go ahead. <laughs> He's given another option as far as concerned. But the larger vision here is that you can sell all day long. And you can sell all day long even as you make different brands, if you made different brands as part of the company, or if you went to your local places. That overall theme is your 100% that you could sell all day long. That core story, though, how often is that being told? And by who? Right, it's being told by me. Only by you? Yeah, I, I did a Google talk last week. I talked about it there. I spoke at a conference yesterday. But my team doesn't necessarily fully understand it. Yes. And our team is almost, we only have 65 people. Yeah. So each of our distributors have hundreds of salespeople. Yes. And they don't know the story. So what here's, then what you and I have to figure out, what you have to figure out, and I'd like to plant the seed with you on is, how do we make this so fucking simple? How do we repeat it so often that everybody in your organization can't help but repeat it? How do we keep it in front of them? How do we make that happen? Because if you can sell that core story, the size of your company is tiny already compared to what it will be. Because the promise, this is what Starbucks did, right? Howard Schultz didn't create Starbucks. He went to Italy. He went to Italy and he saw all these coffee shops where they charged an arm and a leg for coffee that, you know, steep. Everybody was spending 50 cents for, you know, going to a coffee shop. What was a coffee shop? A place where you got pancakes and eggs and bacon and, oh, by the way, coffee. And he said, fuck that. In Italy, they have actual coffee shops. That's all it is. And people, he saw something unique that he was selling. He wasn't selling coffee. He was selling a place to go between work and home. That's what he told me. He said, I love coffee, but that's not what it was. 
I was selling them on a lifestyle alternative to going to drinking. So on the way to work, on the way home, they need to decompress before they deal with kids, the family, everybody at home. They stop there on the way or on the way back and they give themselves a treat. And the whole goal was let them have a treat that by spending four or five dollars instead of 50 cents, they could feel like they're living like a king, that they have this special thing they've given in their life. That is something you can build a multi-billion dollar company on, not a half billion dollar company on. But you now, your whole thing now is how do I refine that story so that I can get my salespeople, everybody telling it, how do I jump out and get the public where they're asking for it? How do I shift that? So you're doing that on your own. You've done unbelievably well. How do we jump it to the next level? So I want you to think about it. And I don't want you to answer it now because it deserves the thinking. But before the end of this week, are you up for delivering an answer, not just to me, but to all of us, just so we hear what you come up with? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. You got it, Daniel. Give me a hand.